RPGs, some people's favorite games of all time, yet other people can't stand them. So what the heck is going on here? Well, one of the biggest things is that RPGs tend to be slower paced and require a bit more patience compared to something like an action platformer of the time. That being said, it's every gamer's right to not want to be patient. I mean, it's not like calling your internet provider where it's just a necessary evil to be patient. No, which video games you play is a matter of preference. There's nothing that says you have to play certain kinds of games, even as much as you may feel pressure from having games come so heavily recommended. So what is the big appeal of RPGs? Well, the result is often a lengthy adventure with a worthwhile story that feels grander in scope. You get to build your character, or more often characters, in games that provide a growing sense of accomplishment as you progress through them. They can certainly feel like an investment, and for some people it may just not be an investment worth making. Making. And if you're not looking for your video games to tell a story, then yeah, RPGs are not for you. It's not fair to criticize a RPG for having too much story. It's like saying a book has too many words. You gotta know what you're in for. If you're trying to determine whether or not these games are for you, the most useful thing I can probably do is to go over some of the other main sticking points for people who struggle to see the appeal of the genre, as well as some of the reasons why fans love those very same things, or at the very least aren't bothered by them. If you're going to get into RPGs, then you're going to need to understand why people like them and be able to get behind that reasoning. In my opinion, getting into RPGs isn't so much about picking the right game, though that can certainly help, but more so about understanding where the enjoyment comes from. Also, I should clarify that I'm mostly talking about traditional Japanese RPGs, which were in their heyday during the 90s and are therefore very relevant to most retro gamers. Okay, so the first thing I need to address is this stigma that's been attached to RPGs that they're only for dorks or nerds. Take your pick. This goes back to the days of the 80s and 90s when video games were more looked down upon in general and things like bullying were much more of a problem, at least as it pertains to being judged for playing video games. Nowadays, you can say you play video games loud and proud and nobody really cares. But back in the day, a lot of kids would even go so far as to hide the fact that they played video games from certain people. In some cases, you could maybe get away with saying you like something like Punch-Out or Sonic, but with games that had names like Final Fantasy, Fantasy Star, and Secret of Mana, these kinds of words could easily be interpreted by bullies as code for please punch me into a locker or pick me up and swirly my head into a toilet. Of course, when Final Fantasy VII came out, the perception around RPGs changed forever, being a popular game for a system, the PlayStation 1, that had a reputation for appealing to an older and quote-unquote cooler crowd. Plus, nowadays the retro gaming community doesn't really label people as dorks or nerds in a negative way, those words aren't used in nearly as derogatory of a fashion anymore, so what's the problem? Well, even though they may not carry as much of a negative connotation, it still makes gamers tend to group them in their own category. And for some, the high fantasy and melodrama often present in these types of games just doesn't appeal to them. On the flip side, the potential for appeal in a positive manner is huge, being that for many, one of the best things about video games is how different they can be from the real world. Because the real world sucks. Or, you know, it's just nice to have a different setting. But themes aside, what are some of the issues related to the gameplay experience that people don't like? Well, reason number one with a bullet has got to be grinding. Grinding is typically referred to as the process of fighting battles with your characters, and often the same battles, over and over in an attempt to level up your characters. Now, sometimes this refers to the expected battles required to progress through the game, but oftentimes it refers to an extra effort you're putting in on the side to level up and be better equipped for what's coming ahead. For example, wandering around the same little area fighting the same enemies over and over until you level up high enough to fight a difficult boss coming up. 
or looking for that gosh danged Pokemon that's supposed to be around here somewhere. Also, grinding is just not a very flattering term, is it? People will often describe grinding as bad game design, and it's certainly easy to see where they're coming from. That being said, I would argue that the best RPGs have minimal grinding, if any at all. But good strategy during battles can often overcome being a bit underleveled, and the best RPGs have you both learning new abilities and facing different enemies at a steady pace, keeping the gameplay fresh and interesting. And this is a huge part of the appeal of RPGs as well. The strategy during battles can give you a lot to think about, and whether or not that appeals to you is a huge make or break factor as to whether or not you'll enjoy these games. Which is ironic, because another one of the huge criticisms against RPGs is that the battles are too simple, and some even go so far as to deduce it to just pressing the A button over and over. To be fair, there are certain sections where you can make your way through by just using basic attacks over and over to plow through weaker enemies, but I still find this discredits the amount of using your brain that the better RPGs will require from you. Deciding which character you're using to heal, how many characters to attack, which enemy to go after first, which attacks work best against certain enemy types, which items you'll need, how pissed off you'll be if you lose a long battle, and an hour of progress since your last save. The list goes goes on and on for all the different things you'll need to consider. This can make you feel like a genius by the end of certain difficult battles. In particular, I find that a lot of the RPGs from the 90s are pretty challenging, in line with the difficulty of other games from that era. That's right, even though they are typically much longer games doesn't mean they take it easier on you just because you have a long way to go. I find the challenge makes the strategy during battles more critical and more satisfying as a result. For all these reasons, I would actually say you don't necessarily want a cakewalk for your first RPG as a lot of the enjoyment comes from letting your big brain go to work. Much like a game of chess, the challenge comes from needing to outsmart your opponent, rather than precise mastery of the movement and manipulation of your character like it would in something like an action platformer. As a result, the satisfaction you get is often less immediate, but ultimately just as rewarding, if not potentially more so. However, for some this kind of gameplay is just not action heavy enough, and for those people there luckily is a middle ground, appropriately called action RPGs. Secret of Mana is perhaps one of the best examples, and some people will even label the Zelda games as such, though that's a sensitive subject for some people so let's not get into it here. Because you control your character more directly by being able to move them around, it can make the gameplay feel more immediate. This also tends to alleviate another big issue that some gamers have with the genre, being random battles. Most action RPGs don't have random battles, and quite a few of the turn-based RPGs do have random battles. Though, there are counterexamples to both of these. So when it comes to deciding what you like, action or turn-based, random or not random battles, having a main character that actually talks or a mute, the solution is pretty simple. Just choose the game that has what you prefer. Furthermore, many RPGs often have quirks that give them a bit more of their own identity. For example, the Final Fantasy games and Chrono Trigger have what is called active time battle, where the gameplay is turn-based, but depends on a timer for each character that incentivizes making quicker decisions, which generally makes battles feel more lively. Then there's games like Earthbound, which have a mechanic where you will automatically win battles if you are strong enough in comparison to them, removing what will would likely be more lopsided and therefore less interesting battles. The point is, there's a lot of variations between RPGs and you can customize what you want based on which game you pick. All this being said, it's still entirely possible you won't be into any RPGs and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. After all, we have different preferences and gamers are just naturally going to gravitate to different genres. Plus, they'll always be around if you do get curious one day. But anyways, that's my view on the genre, and of course, I'd be interested to hear some of the things that you either like best or hate when it comes to RPGs. This can be a divisive topic, so try to keep it civil, but I've found that my viewers generally do a pretty good job of that. Oh, and don't think that I forgot about strategy RPGs either, because those deserve their own separate video. Alright, so be sure to leave those comments down below, and I will see ya in the next video. Is the red bird, yeah. Talking, talking
about putting me on games. 